Many of you have not heard of Pol Pot, the dictator of Cambodia. You may have heard of Ho Chi Minh, the dictator of North Vietnam during the Vietnam War. These men studied together in uh, Europe and were uh, members of the same communist organization. For all of its faults and missteps, the Vietnam War was the effort of the United States to counter the worldwide socialist communist Marxist movement. This pre-existing Marxist movement with its roots in France was part of the instigator of the worldwide outbreak of violent protests in the year 1968. A protest, a radical protest fever that extended into the United States and was seen on our college campuses and also among certain members of Lyndon Johnson's White House staff and administration. Thus we have the names Daniel Ellsberg who became famous when he stole and leaked to the press the Pentagon Papers. Daniel Ellsberg illegally published this material, opening the door for it to be published widely and in well-known newspapers. One of his helpers in that escapade was Morton Halperin. I submit that uh, these individuals were heavily influenced and misled by the socialist movement, which may or may not have emanated from the Soviet Union, because it could be a separate socialist entity, perhaps even in competition with the uh, Soviet-style communism. So here we have Pol Pot, Ho Chi Minh, an outbreak of student protest worldwide, including the United States. You may recall Walter Cronkite appearing on TV with the editorial saying that the Vietnam War is a lost cause. He said that in, um, in reference to uh, the Tet Offensive, which in fact was a decisive battle won by the United States, but it served a political purpose, and that political purpose was exploited by these left-wingers. The virus of socialism permeated several institutions in several countries around the world, influencing to some degree many people who had no idea of the origin of this virus, this socialist Marxist virus. Zoom forward to the years 2000, 2004, 2008, and you see these same players working to defeat John McCain and Sarah Palin. Joined with them now is a multi-billionaire by the name of George Soros. I'm going to read a little blurb put out by a man named Horowitz. And it came from uh, frontpagemagazine.com. It begins speaking of a memo written by Mark Halperin, who is the son of the Morton Halperin, who not only was um, instrumental in uh, doing great harm to the Lyndon Johnson administration and afterwards the Richard Nixon administration. Mort Halperin uh, was um, an influential player in the Clinton administration. Clinton being a anti-war protester in his youth who fled the draft. John Kerry was an anti-Vietnam War protester who teamed up with Jane Fonda. Is all this starting to ring a bell? So we zoom forward to the years uh, 2004. And the article says, ABC News has left in place its political director, Mark Halperin, ABC has done this despite the network's acknowledgement that Halperin wrote a memo 
that to many seems to direct ABC reporters, and what does this have to do with Charles Gibson's interview of uh, Sarah Palin? Halpern wrote a memo that to many seems to direct ABC reporters, anchors, and producers to slant its coverage. That's the gist of it. He wrote a memo that appears to many to direct ABC reporters, anchors, and producers to slant its, co slant its coverage in favor of Kerry and against Bush. Halperin's directive reached ABC people on uh, October the 8th, the very day that ABC Good Morning America co-host Charlie Gibson would be selecting questions for and moderating the second presidential debate between Bush and Kerry. Did Halperin intend to influence Gibson's decisions in this debate? Well, of course. Halperin uh, is the son of Morton Halperin, hard left, anti-war wackos. Now, they're welcome to their opinions, but we ought to know who has these opinions. And if we don't share these opinions, we might want to keep a close eye on the Halperins and the Moyers and the Soros people. Mark Halperin had been the political director of ABC News since 1997 and has covered politics and campaigns through four election cycles. He knows his way around. As political director, Halperin is responsible for the planning and editorial content of all political news on the network. And that's according to the biographies posted by the, by ABC. Morton Halperin today is senior vice president of the Left Wing Center for American Progress and director of the Open Society Policy Center, established by eccentric, is putting it mildly, eccentric billionaire, international financier. That's not quite accurate. George Soros. George Soros is frankly a gambler. A high-stakes gambler, gambling for huge, huge pots. And recently, in the recent years, he's won, and so he's loaded with cash. Born in 1933 in Brooklyn, Morton Halperin graduated from Columbia University in 1958 and earned a Ph.D. from Yale. He taught at Harvard University's Center for International Affairs. He worked in the Defense Department and became a staff member of the National Security Council. In 1970, Halperin resigned to protest. He said, President Nixon's decision to move American forces into Cambodia and to intensify the bombing of North Vietnam. Why on earth would he protest? He doesn't want us to win the Vietnam War? What's the problem? Yeah, he doesn't want us to win the Vietnam War. Classified details of U.S. bombing in Cambodia had been leaked. Now, does that sound familiar? Today we have leakers. We have all these memos, the Downing Street memo, the Manning memo. Uh, we have all these uh, reporters uh, who pretend to report the news, but they're actually... Uh, not only speculating, but uh, coloring events, shading events in a light that doesn't uh, portray uh, the Iraq War, for example, accurately. Classified details of U.S. bombing in Cambodia had been leaked to the New York Times, and security officials suspecting Halperin had been tapping his telephones. Halperin sued the government over what he called this violation of his privacy. He called it a violation of his privacy. I don't think that uh, spies are entitled to a lot of privacy. 